We're chicken, everyone. Sorry to you fucking morons that can't read and realize that a Biden-Trump debate probably wouldn't be put online this evening and it'd only be about five minutes long, but sorry to be disappointing, but hopefully you stick around because I have great insight and uh, have a good opinion on this one. So if you guys do manage to stick around and if you are one of my faithful watchers, I appreciate each and every one of you, but if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and don't mind smashing that like button because, hey, it does absolutely nothing to you, but it helps me out a ton. As well, feel free to drop a comment in the section below because I'm faithful in replying to all the comments out there. And if you want to discuss anything about the potential upcoming debate, anything that I discuss in the video, or anything in general that you'd like to see me cover on, well, on my channel here, I'm open for suggestions and open for conversation. But let's just hop right into this. This Biden-Trump debate, I think it would just be a four-hour podcast, right? Just kind of an open forum where they go back discussing different, different policies that they want to go over. But all in all, it's just going to devolve into has Trump ever had elk meat or when was the last time that Joe Biden took DMT in the early 50s? Regardless... I think my opinion is Trump is going to be on the Joe Rogan podcast before the election takes place, regardless if Biden decides to shamble his withering old ass out to Texas. I am damn near sure, certain. I'll give it about a 95% chance that Trump will be on the podcast. He's already tweeted support of this idea for this four-hour, what was originally described as a debate, he's already in for it, so. And it could only be a good thing for Trump. Both forums would be great for him. Because Joe is inconsistent with his logic. Now hear me out on this one. There's going to be some Joe Rogan fans who might get upset by that comment. He... When he was talking to Brett Weinstein, you know, last time Brett was on, he took the middle of the road, mainstream media peddled. Uh, Rayshard Brooks was just sleeping in a Wendy's drive through and the cops just mercilessly shot him. And his opinion of Trump is bonkers. Okay. The first time Jordan Peterson was on the Joe Rogan podcast, this was months, was it a year? It wasn't long after Trump took office and he already had the opinion that Trump was the worst president, or Trump was not a very good president without citing any sources, without really looking at what he accomplished in his first 30 days. If we go back and take a look at that, and hopefully a video for the future, what he did in the first 30 days, it was, well, the one thing that immediately comes to mind is he banned political lobbying once you, if you are to lose your seat in the federal, at the federal level, you aren't allowed to lobby for a set amount of time. And I think it's three years. I think it's three years. Don't quote me on that. We're going to take a deep dive into what he actually did. But Joe's of that opinion that orange man bad and orange man do no good because I read the Washington Post and the New York Times is supposed to be the paper of record even though it's been on a steady decline since at least 2011. Anyways, I think if, I think when, I'm not even going to say if, I think when Trump gets onto the podcast there, he's going to be able to talk about his platform and he's a lot more charismatic than Biden. If this debate or this podcast was to happen about five or ten years ago, Joe Biden was in the past. I did a video on his disintegration of public speaking. Biden was a very uh, energetic, a very eloquent speaker. So it would be very, it would be very, very close. Nowadays, though, a four hour setting for Biden. He couldn't handle it. He would just be a rambly disaster. And Rogan's not the one to just let that slide. I'll give him credit where credit's due. 
And regardless, I think Trump would shine because he would be able to shit on him without impunity because there'd be no MSM moderator there. And man, it would be ugly in person. But when Trump actually does just show up and if it ends up being a solo podcast, he will be able to explain his ideas without interruption. He will be able to shatter any sort of misconception that the greater podcasting watching and listening audience at large has about him has about trump that is so it only benefits trump to do this so that's why i think it's very likely that he will do it in whatever shape and form this eventually takes because right now all we know is trump's on board rogan's on board Biden hasn't said a fucking thing. That could change very quickly. This is Tuesday evening, September 15th. I'll hold up a newspaper if I need to for the next one. But if there's any late breaking developments, I will be right there with you guys because I want to see this happen. Mostly because there's a lot of disinformation about the president. And once you do some digging on him, you realize he's not a bad guy. And you realize that... uh, A lot of those lies out there are just made to smear him because he's actually looking out for the American people. And that's what I very much like about him. But because the first video was so long, I just wanted to do a nice little easy take on this one. I just had this article in the background because obviously a comedian who tells off-color jokes is going to be labeled as misogynist, racist, and homophobic by the... uh, I don't know, the Mensa cell that is the view. It's not important. Just needed something hilarious in the background to uh, help me out with this. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, hey, feel free to sub, drop a like, comment below if you have any opinions on how this debate slash podcast is going to take place in the near future. I guarantee it. Anyways, guys, I've been Don Consuelo. I want you guys to follow your gut. Get after it. Take care, everyone.